thinking about. That leads actually perfectly into what I was going to uh, talk about. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I've been thinking about pop culture and what's happening in pop culture. And just going back to when I was growing up, I could tell if somebody grew up around the time I did by what television shows they watched. Because there were a few networks and there were certain shows and you just knew. Um, when the Beatles went on Ed Sullivan, I guess it was back in the late 60s, the first time they went on, more than 40% of the population saw them. And I don't think there is any more, I know there is no longer any show on television, or I, I can't think of any place really in the popular culture where you could get that large a percentage of the population to pay attention. American Idol, which is you know, perhaps one of the, the most popular shows, I don't have the percentages, but I'm gonna say that and figure the population was smaller um, back then. 73 million, million Americans watched the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. The highest numbers that I see for American Idol are 33 million viewers. So like, think about that. And the population's bigger now, and this is really popular. So I, I do see this thing happening also in music as well, right? Where people are able to get whatever they want, when they want it, where they want it. This is kind of the big media phrase that you hear right now. Get what you want, when you want it, where you want it. I've been listening to this in, mm -hmm. as a reporter um, going on now for, for some time. People used to talk about the digital divide, meaning those who were online and those who were offline. I think that divide is well on its way to being over. You know, and I'm just assuming it's going to be over. I think the divide that's increasingly existing is just that we are these becoming more and more of very heterogeneous, finding the people whose culture we happen to share, um, whether it be anorexics or whether it be um, the people, young people who like Doctor Who. You know, uh, one of our producers, her daughter is a huge Doctor Who fan. She goes online, she finds other kids who like that. But there's no sense of this um, shared culture. This is also, in, as one of the uh, last remaining mainstream media organizations, you know, I'm watching around me what's going on and newspapers just kind of falling and you're seeing the rise of blogs and this, uh, what struck me is you're talking about this kind of bottom-up authority um, where people just start to talk and people listen and there's no sort of top-up, there's no filter, there's no Ed Sullivan saying, check out the Beatles, I think they're really great. Um, in some ways, this concerns me a bit. I, I, I don't know, I'm not anti-technology, but um, I do see these echo chambers starting to form. So if you go on, I think really the break happened before, it started to happen before the internet with cable where you got so many channels. And now you can go on, you can watch cable news, you can watch Rachel Maddow, or you can watch Fox, and you can find the people you agree with. And I think the same thing starts to happen in, in online communities as well. And it's something to think about that is such a heterogeneous society that the United States is. Where are our um, common mm -hmm. public forums? Where will they be in the future? And, I, and it's something that I've been thinking about lately. Well, maybe we could actually